senior chief instructor at Westwind Schools. This is my son, Jared, who's a fifth degree black belt. And we'd like to help some of our friends and students in Australia, the Lauren family. This is for Wes and for Seth. And Seth is trying to get, go from now purple to blue. And we're gonna help him with uh, the first dawn techniques and also kata three. We'd like to start with Jared showing kata three. He's just gonna go through the steps and then he's gonna explain each step, and this will hopefully help Seth to learn it, and anybody else who is trying to uh, get the first on for the purple belt. So Jared's gonna show kata three, and then we're both gonna work with the techniques. All right, so this is gonna be kata three. It's gonna start very similar to kata one and two. And go four stance, set positions, really strong fist, and then sheath on top. And our first step is we're gonna step in with our right leg, Gonna step into a horse stance. I'm gonna do it right inward block. I was gonna do a sweeping downward block to a chop to the carotid artery. And your left hand is gonna be a guard on the body. You're gonna do the same thing on the left side. You're gonna step in with a left inward block, sweep, and then chop the carotid artery on the other side of the neck. And after this, someone's coming from our left side. So we're gonna pull back and have our hidden hands on our right ribs, um, the right fist is down below and the left fist is uh, perpendicular on top. We're gonna look over to our left. And we're gonna do an outward block to punch. Yeah, it's using punch, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just, I, okay. and we're gonna do the same thing on the right side. So we're gonna come here to a, right, a left cat and we're going to go hidden hands on our left ribs we're gonna go outward block and twisting karate punch over here. Yeah. And then someone's coming from behind us. So we're gonna come into a cat. We're gonna bring our left fore, left foot here. Left foot's light. We're going to go left, left uh, set on our left ribs. And we're gonna have a middle knuckle fist, which is basically the same as a regular fist, but you're protruding your middle knuckle. So see like that? We're gonna come back here, we're gonna look at the attacker here. We're gonna have this fist on top of our head up here as a guard. We're gonna do a left upward block. Then we're gonna drive the middle knuckle fist, the middle knuckle, into the solar plexus and then rip down. That's gonna be really painful for the attacker. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So someone's coming from over here. We're gonna pull into right, right set and then left middle knuckle fist over our head, right cat stance, and we're gonna come in, upward block, hit the solar plexus, and then rip down. And then someone's gonna come from our back 45 over here. We're gonna come up to left cat. We're gonna have a, block, a cross block up here, and we're gonna come down. We're gonna block a front kick with our double kick blocks from the white belt. And the guys open up, so we're gonna step into a horse. We're gonna heel pan the attacker's chin with the left guard on the body. Then we're gonna do the same thing with someone coming from this angle. We're gonna come up, look that way, cross block up here. We're gonna step in, block the kick. And then he's opened up, we're gonna step in, heel pan to the chin. And then we're gonna look back at our other counter 45 over here. We're gonna come back to, to cat. We're gonna block an inward, inward block. And we're gonna come in. We're gonna do an upward block to clear the arm. Then we're gonna go for the throat with the half fist. And the same thing's gonna happen over here. We come here, block, upward block, and then half fist to the throat. And then we just come in and weapon sheet. Then I'll run through it one more time, going slow, and just show you the pattern again. So we're here, weapon, sheath, block, chop, block, chop, pull back, look to our left, outward block punch, look to our right, outward block punch, look behind us, guard on top, and that upward block, hit the solar plexus, rip down. Come this way, do the same thing. 
upper block, rip through the solar plexus, and I come back to this corner, cross block, kick block, and then heel hand, and then this corner, cross block, kick block, heel of hand, and someone's coming from this corner, come here, inward, upward, half fist, this corner, inward, upward, half fist. And weapon sheet. Nice, thank you, Jared. Should I do it uh, full speed or is it? Okay. No, that's good. Okay. So now we'd like to help uh, our student Seth with the techniques. And the first technique we learn is rising knee, second is crashing anvil, third is three hands of china, and then fourth is plucking the bird from the sky, and last one for the first time is the sleeper. So we'd like to do rising knee with you first. I'll teach that one and we'll have Jared be the, the bad guy to help out, out so we can see what's happening, and then Jared will teach crashing anvil. So in rising knee, what's going on is a guy's throwing a straight punch at your face with his right hand. So you're standing here. Hopefully you're not waiting to get hit. Hopefully you've done other tactics that we'll talk about in a later part of the video. But uh, maybe you got caught off guard and a right punch is coming straight at your face. What you want to do is get your face out of the way by stepping with your left foot into a horse stance. Not straight ahead to 12 o'clock, but out to 11 o'clock. And that's going to get your head just out of the way you're going to be on the outside of your opponent's punch. And as long as that punch misses you, you're good. So as you do the block, or as you do the step, you're also going to take your left hand and you're going to come up with an open hand position, do a new kind of block called a soft hand block. Your right hand will be in a guard position over by your solar plexus. So we're doing that block and that step at the same time. So Jared throws a punch and we go block. And even if he comes at me for really fast, all I got to do is just lightly step out of the way, stay relaxed, and just put a little bit of pressure. Kind of different from what we're used to. We're used to really hitting hard and doing damage to the arm. In this belt, we're using an idea of very minimal force, just enough to slightly redirect it so you don't get hit. So it's an interesting kind of block. If it's done correctly, the person throwing the punch almost doesn't feel it. Your only goal with this kind of block is not damage to your opponent, but just redirection of the attack so you don't get hit. So he comes at me again really hard, just slight motion off to the side. My other hand, my right hand, is going to come up underneath his arm. I'm going to do what's called a rising block. I'm going to use this hard part of my hand, like the chop part of the hand, to come up underneath and knock his arm up. My goal here is to knock his arm up out of the way to expose some of the front targets on his body and also to cause a wide motion, allowing me a lot of power when I turn into a hard bow and I hit the opponent in the solar plexus or the ribs, whatever is open, but my angle of attack is slightly upward. It's gonna do a lot of damage. It'll have a lot of power. If I just hit Jared from my set position to here, it'd be pretty good. It'd be about a foot and a half worth of acceleration. But if I use this new premise, this new idea in rising knee, I've used a lot of motion. I have about seven feet, starting at my hip. One foot, two feet on contact, three feet of a rise, four, five, six past my hip, about seven feet before I make contact. So by then, my hand would be moving very quickly and would have a lot of potential energy. It would do a lot of damage. And this should probably end the fight. So that would be the first part of rising knee, is to do a block. Second, a rising block to knock his arm out of the way. This goes to a Chinese guard. And then a hard bow to allow for more power and reach. And a reverse punch to the solar plexus or ribs. As he bends over, my right hand will naturally just reach up and grab his right shoulder. That'd be the shoulder closest to me. I want to dig in with, a, with an eagle's claw. You can grab clothing. It'd be better to actually grab into the bone structure of his shoulder and, and all, as much tissue as you can. At this point, I'm going to pull him in toward my hip, but my right knee is going to come up and strike this soft part of the body, the solar plexus. So I have a Chinese guard. I pull in with my right knee comes up into the body. That's where we get that name, the rising knee. And that'll be very powerful because you're using one of the most powerful weapons that we have as a martial artist, our knee, and you're pulling the guy into it, which creates even more damage. So probably end, ends the fight. We always uh, have extra in our system, which is great, but usually the first couple of strikes, it's all over. You talk to people who had to use this system in self-defense, Typically in about one to two seconds, the fight's over. And it's usually by the, about the second shot. 
So if Jared throws a punch, we go fire to the body. We grab the shoulder. We knee to the solar plexus. This stays in a guard. As he bends over, I'm going to keep holding with my right hand. I'm going to guide him down toward my right hip. My left hand is going to go through a wide arc way up above the biggest circle I can. And I'm going to let go of my right hand into a Chinese guard. I'm going to pivot into a left soft bow as I fire a chop as hard as I can to the base of the brain. So I'm going to either be hitting the cervical spine or slightly harder the medulla oblongata, which is going to cut off his brain's ability to talk to his body. Probably would cause unconsciousness. Just to make sure we get him, we come around with our right hand also in a wide arc, as high as we can. We pivot into a right soft bow and we strike the same target a second time. So again, this is rising knee. Jared throws a punch. We do the soft hand block and reverse, uh, a rising block, reverse punch. We grab by the shoulder, we knee him in the solar plexus. As he bends over, right chop to the base of the brain, left chop to the base of the brain. Then my left foot is going to step back toward the corner, toward 45 degrees. I'll step back 45 degrees. I'm going to fire a right back knuckle. I'm going to be hitting my opponent in his temple. This is his right temple, which would be a very effective strike. But just to make sure we got him, we'll also do a rear kick to the head too. So right as my right hand comes back, rear kick to the head, cross step with our open hand guards, and then fighting stance. And that's, that's rising knee, which is a great technique. It's the first one we're teaching in this belt. We'll go through it again slowly. So Jared throws a punch. I do the block. Rising block comes underneath. Reverse punch to the solar plexus. Grab the shoulder. Knee to the solar plexus as he bends over. Chop to the base of the brain. Big circle. Chop to the base of the brain. Left foot steps back toward the corner, 45 degrees. Right back knuckle to the temple. As the back knuckle returns, rear kick to the head, and then cross step away. So the next technique we'd like to teach is crashing anvil. And Jared's going to go over this one with you. This is, I'll be the bad guy. This is a right-left punch combination. Very good way of stopping that attack.